Uh, let's move on to the, unless there's any more questions, let's move on to the final uh, talk of this session. So the final talk of this session is an invited, uh, uh, an invited talk. It's the Darla Miller invited lecture. Uh, uh, this year it was uh, Ken Manley was chosen to give the talk. And yeah, and um, the speakers that we choose from, I mean, we try to pick someone who's given a sort of really significant contribution to the society over the years and, and the mouse community um, and genetics community in general. Um, and yeah, this year's lecture will be given with Ken Manley from the University of North Carolina. Thank you. I am deeply grateful to be recognized by this society as the Darla Miller Distinguished Service Awardee. This society has been an important home to me, and I've known and worked with Darla for more than half of her life. My 75th birthday was yesterday, so it's been somewhat less than half of my life. Darla's model of professional service is an inspiration to us all. Cheap computers, growing cheaper and more powerful each year, have transformed our civilization. They have made genetics a big data sort of information science. And in doing so, they've offered some geneticists an alternative career. For me, at Roswell Park Cancer Institute, the first hint of that alternative appeared about 1977. My colleague Joel Huberman bought a Chromemco microcomputer. If you saw the 1984 Ghostbusters movie, you saw a Chromemco on the bench in the Ghostbuster laboratory. The year 1977 also saw the publication of the first full genome sequence, that of bacteriophage Phi X174. A scientific visionary might have noticed the sequence on the computer and predicted the formation of this society just nine years later. I was not that visionary, but I, was, I did become fascinated by this machine and its built-in basic programming language. In short, over the next few years, I bought a few computers and learned a few programming languages. In 1985, I bought a Macintosh. I saw, within a couple of years, I saw Rosemary Elliott using a spreadsheet to display genotypes from a set of recombinant inbred mouse lines. The spreadsheet was a useful display tool, but it contributed little to the analysis. By then, I knew that I could do better. And with Rosemary's advice, I began to write what would be become the Map Manager family of software. The first version focused on mapping marker loci and Mendelian traits in recombinant inbred lines. Later versions added other types of crosses and simple methods for identifying quantitative trait loci. I was able for a while to provide both Windows and Mac OS versions, but those versions were dependent on commercial software whose developers were not responsive to scientific needs. Since then, I have written web-based software that avoids that dependence. In August of 1999, Rob Williams proposed a collaboration that would put this type of analysis on the web. I contributed a, a, sec, a section to his program project grant application and found an excellent programmer, Jinto Wang, to develop the original WebQTL software um, for Rob's Gene Network website. This slide shows a, a part of the front page for an earlier version of Gene Network and WebQTL. The current version has been extended and redesigned by Rob and his collaborators. Meanwhile, in the spring of 2005, the collaborative cross began. David Threadgill, Kent Hunter, and Rob Williams had proposed this project in 2001 at a satellite of this meeting. It aimed to create a large set of recombinant inbred lines from eight diverse, well-characterized mouse lines. 
Gary Churchill supplied hybrid mice that allowed breeding to begin in Kenya, Australia, and the United States. The U.S. part of the cross started at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, where Dabney Johnson and Darla Miller managed the project. I volunteered to write software to manage and document the breeding. That software was called CCDB, and this slide shows the very utilitarian design of the front page of that program. CCDB is still in use for a few collaborative cross lines which are not yet sufficiently inbred. The CCDB program uses a relational database to store its data. This slide shows a very simplified diagram of the database structure. Data is organized into multiple tables, each containing closely related information. Links join related information in different tables. This structure allows data to be searched using a language called SQL. These searches are independent of whatever functions are built into the CCD program itself. They can retrieve data using any logically consistent set of criteria. We are now searching the historical information in CCDB to identify mice that will tell us something about why some lines became extinct during breeding. This ability to make complex searches is the greatest advantage a relational database provides over spreadsheets. In 2009, Darla Miller and the U.S. part of the Collaborative Cross moved to UNC Chapel Hill to the laboratory of Fernando Parto Manuel de Viena. The laboratory started collecting tissue and DNA samples at every generation. The identity and location of those samples were stored in spreadsheets, of course. A spreadsheet makes a fine database when you have 100 items to track. When you have 1,000 or 10,000, it's not so fine. The Collaborative Cross needed a new program. By that time, I knew uh, of the existence of several integrated libraries of code called frameworks that made web application development easier. I chose to use an open source framework called Web2Pi. Since then, I've written three programs for the Collaborative Cross using Web2Pi. Boda is the... No. Boda is the tracking application for tissue and nucleic acid samples. The pre-existing data for Boda was already in spreadsheets and the habit of collecting it that way was already established. I designed Boda to accept tables of data copied from a spreadsheet and pasted into a large input box. Boda would then parse the pasted data and distribute it to the appropriate database tables, multiple database tables. Boda now has about 40,000 records for mice, 50,000 records for tissue samples, and 15,000 for nucleic acid samples. The second program, RxDB, was a breeding program for F1 hybrids of CC lines. It recorded vital statistics for those litters of hybrid mice produced and tracked shipment of those, litter, of those mice to other investigators. Since the fall of 2014, RxDB has been retired and its functions incorporated into the next program, BOBS. BOBS is a breeding program for production breeding, that is, breeding that may house multiple females with a single male. It allows pups to be reserved for a client before weaning. Then when the surviving pups are weaned, reservations are converted to assignments or adjusted um, as needed. And then um, for each shipment, Bob's prepares a manifest with detailed information on each mouse, either in printable or spreadsheet format. We've been using Bob's for about three years now. It has records for 1,500 active breeding boxes and historical data for 7,000 weaned litters and 40,000 mice, of which almost 18,000 were destined for other laboratories. 
In recent months, Bob's has recorded shipments of 500 to 1,000 mice per month. One of the primary design goals of my software is to enable efficient, error-free data entry. We avoid typing. As I mentioned, we did that for RxDB by pasting tables of data from spreadsheets. Reading a barcode is also an excellent way to avoid the keyboard, but we've only been able to use that in one case, reading a seven-digit barcoded box number. Otherwise, programs provide defaults for as many fields as possible. Uh, for example, when you inventory litters for, in a breeding box, the date of, inven of inventory defaults to the last date you used. When valid values for a field are sufficiently few, Bob's offers a menu. So this would be females of the particular line that you've chosen, those females that are known to be available for setting up a new mating. Uh, similarly, when you start to enter a date, a pop-up calendar appears and you can pick the date from the calendar rather than typing it. Finally, when we want to assign mice at weaning, we often want to assign identical values to several uh, mice. This button uh, that repeats the most recent assignment for the newly selected mouse has been very useful. We call it a ditto button, and it's faster and more reliable than either typing or menu selection. In addition, to catch more subtle errors, the Web2Pi framework includes a validation system like many, of you see, like many of those that you've seen on website forms. If I try to submit a form with inappropriate values, a specific error message appears beside each problematic field. The programmer can implement this, this system easily by just defining a test for each data item and a message to be displayed if it fails. In a laboratory, experimental goals and procedures change unpredictably. These changes often require a software change. Developing, labor developing software for laboratory use means constant revision. Nevertheless, modern software development tools make it possible for a part-time developer to develop and maintain software customized to fit laboratory procedure. For large and long-term projects, this software can contribute a lot to the success of the project. Daryl Doyle, Vern Chapman, and Kenneth Gross were laboratory heads at uh, Rosa Park Cancer Institute who encouraged me in the early years Rosemary Elliott was my collaborator with the Map Manager software. And these are all more, more recent collaborators. I especially want to uh, cite Fernando Pardo Manuel de Viena for uh, support in recent years. And thanks finally to Darla Miller, the eponym of the award that brings me here, for her years as a colleague and friend. That was a really nice talk. I'm really not nice. sure the questions are appropriate for this. It was a really nice talk, a really nice historical insight. Um, we are right on time for the opening mix here. I'm quite proud of my timekeeping, so I won't keep you here much longer. Let's go to the opening mixer. Thank you for attending the session.